Okay, so going throughout that process of significance testing, of hypothesis testing, there's a few different kinds of numbers, three different kinds of values that we get either through these hand calculations or through um, the stats program, something like Stata, that we're using to calculate these statistics for us. So three different kinds of numbers that we're going to be talking quite a lot about through the rest of the semester. The first of that the first kind of number that we can have are test statistics, and I've mentioned those a bunch of times thus far. The particular kind of test statistic we have depends on what the statistical test is that we're undertaking. So we'll have a different test statistic for a t-test versus a correlation versus a chi-square test. Um, but the test statistics themselves, the value of the test statistic is the number that that in a certain way reflects the size of the effect that we have. It reflects the size of the difference between the groups. It reflects the size of the association between the two variables. Test statistics have what's called degrees of freedom that go along with them. I'm going to be explaining more about degrees of freedom next week when we actually start talking about t-tests. But degrees of freedom are certain values that reflect the sample size that we've under that, that we've um, obtained the data from, the size of the sample that we've that we've got the data from, and it they also reflect how many certain parameters or how many values we have that are free to vary in the specific statistical test that we're undertaking. The second kind of number we have is called a p-value and I've talked about them quite a bit so far today. The p-values correspond to the test statistic and the p-value tells us the likelihood or the probability that we've obtained this particular test statistic if the null hypothesis is true. So the probability that we've obtained this pattern of data if the null hypothesis of no effect is true. And we use the p-value to conclude if we have a statistically significant effect or not. The third kind of number that we can talk about, which I would tell you is the most important of those three numbers, is an actual way of representing the size of the effect itself. So I said to you before that the test statistic to a certain extent reflects the size of the effect, but the test statistic, the value of the test statistic is affected by a whole lot of different things. And the size of the p-value is affected by a whole lot of different things, which don't inherently reflect the actual size of the effect. There are other things that affect the size of those values beyond just the size of the effect itself. The effect size calculation or the effect size number is a more pure way of looking at how big the size of the effect is. And effect sizes are really, really important, particularly when we're doing applied research, because they tell us how practically important or how practically meaningful this particular effect is. Um, that might not seem like it makes a lot of sense to you at the moment, but when we actually get into some of the examples from next week on, hopefully it will make more sense. So the effect size tells us the the um, actual value or the size of the effect, the size of the difference between the groups, the strength of the relationship between two variables, and in particular how meaningful or how important the effect is. The meaningfulness or the practical importance of the effect is often quite different to the statistical significance of the effect. And that's because there are other things that affect the statistical significance, such as the sample size. And again, I'll go into more detail about this next week. So effect sizes plus confidence intervals are going to be very important values to discuss when we're undertaking research. Confidence intervals are ways of looking at a non-precise estimate, but an interval estimate, um, and they give us kind of a buffer zone around our effect size. So if I predict that there is, say, a medium size difference between the groups, the confidence intervals, um, specifically 95% confidence intervals are usually the ones that we talk about in psychology. They give us kind of a buffer zone about where we think the real effect lies in our population. So based on the size of the effect in our sample, between what two values do we think that the real effect lies in our population? And again, I'll go into more detail about that next week. And just to finish off, there's also obviously different kinds of statistical tests. So I've mentioned a couple of them throughout today's lecture. Um, we could do a t-test, we could do a correlation, we could do a chi-square test. There's lots of different kinds of t-tests. There's multiple kinds of chi-square tests. You haven't learned them thus far, but the rest of the semester is going to be talking about these different kinds of tests and which particular kind of test to do when. And that's possibly one of the most important things for you guys to learn from this course is 
when is it appropriate to apply a say a chi-square test versus a correlation under what circumstances are each of the individual tests relevant or appropriate and the answer to that question um, depends on a few different things firstly the design of the study itself so how the study is actually designed what's being manipulated versus not manipulated it also depends on the research question and the hypotheses, the particular hypotheses that the researcher predicts. It also depends on the type of data. And we talked a little bit a couple of weeks ago about different kinds of variables, say categorical variables, as opposed to numeric variables. So what kinds of variables we have will dictate what sort of tests we use. But it also depends on the distribution of the data. And that's why we spent a bit of time back in that I think it was week three lecture talking about summaries of data and specifically about the normal distribution and understanding um, whether a particular continuous numeric variable is normally distributed or not. So the type of distribution of the data, specifically whether it is normally distributed or not normally distributed, will also dictate to a certain extent what kind of statistical test we run. Okay, so a few points to finish off today. The first one that we started talking about is that the normal distribution is really important and it's also really useful to us. So understanding the shape of the normal distribution and particular understanding what the normal distribution can give us in terms of information about how unusual a particular score is, is very useful in terms of understanding standardized scores. And we talked about Z scores or Z scores um, a bit at the start of that lecture. But we were also talking about using the normal distribution to give us information about how unusual a particular test statistic value is if our null hypothesis is true. Then we went into more detail about null hypothesis significance testing. And I mentioned to you that the reason that we need to undergo this kind of inferential statistical testing, making an inference from a sample back to a population, is that it allows us to get information about how likely a particular effect is in the population, in the wider population. And specifically, using p-values in the way that we do allows us to almost mimic the replication process. So we wouldn't need to use p-values. We wouldn't need to use this idea of, have, of looking at the probability of obtaining this particular effect if the null hypothesis was true if we could just undertake the same study a hundred times and see what the average effect or what the average relationship is. So the idea of using p-values in the way that we do kind of approximates the idea of replicating a study, replicating a research project a number of times. And again, I'll talk more about that next week. They also allow us to infer information about a particular effect from a sample back to a wider population. And remember that that's always what we're trying to do. We're always trying to get information about a wider population, but because we can't get in, we can't actually collect the data from everyone in that population. We need to use the sample as a representation of the population. And thus, we collect data from the sample, we analyze the data obtained from the sample, and then we make conclusions about whether we think there is an effect in a wider population. We also talked about two different kinds of errors, two different kinds of mistakes we can make, the type 1 and the type 2 error. And the p-value itself, the actual value of the p-value, is our likelihood, our probability of having made a type 1 error. And what we're trying to do in research is to not make either of these two errors, but the difficulty is that we never know if we actually have made either a type 1 or a type 2 error. All we can talk about, all we can get information about is how likely it is that we've made a type 1 and a type 2 error. We also talked relatively briefly about one versus two tailed significance tests. And the reason for the relatively quick skim over that topic is because in psychology, what we do almost invariably is use two tailed tests. And that's what we're going to be doing for all of the rest of the semester and all of the rest of your undergraduate psychology statistics training if you continue to do your degree here at Macquarie. So two-tailed tests are kind of 99% of what people do in psycho psychological research. So it's important for you to understand why we do that, but you will never actually have to do a one-tailed test in your um, undergraduate research training here at Macquarie in psychology. I also mentioned three different kinds of numbers, um, the p-value, the test statistic, and the effect size, and the effect size being the one that's probably the most important or the most relevant to us because that gives us information about the practical significance or the practical usefulness of the effect. 
And then I finished off by talking about different kinds of statistical tests. And as I said before, as of next week on, when we start our journey into t-tests, we will start talking about these different kinds of tests, um, all the different tests that you'll learn throughout the semester and under what circumstances each of those tests are important. So well done in getting through all of that. There's a lot of content today. As I said to you at the start of today, I know it was quite theoretical, a lot of the information, but as we actually go to apply the test from next week on, hopefully because I'll be reiterating a lot of what I've said today, it will make more sense to you in a more practical setting. The most important things you get away from today are just the fundamentals of why we do null hypothesis significance testing and what that involves. But as we go throughout the rest of the semester, I think it'll make more sense to you in terms of how we actually undertake that and what the implications of all of these steps are. So well done, and I'll see you guys next week.